Okay. Well, welcome. We are we're we're live and in, in in person. Not even I don't know if it's Memorex or not at this point. But anyway, <laughs> so uh, Life's Copilot is very excited to bring this panel to you today. We have a great group of people talking about some stuff that maybe you don't even know that's out there that's available for uh, for use. So um, I'm gonna make sure that I have something up here real quick too, just so. I can help out here. Anyway, we have one other guy that's got to get hooked up. He's having some uh, links compared to things. So, all right, I haven't started it now, so let's go ahead and kick off. Hi, we are now live. Okay, so um, welcome. This Life's Copilot is, is excited to introduce to you today this group of experts on new and improved medical opportunities that are out there that you may or may not know about. So I want to go ahead and first of all, start off with my attend my, my panel here and let you guys explain who you are, what you do, what your company does, and uh, what we go from there. So, so let's start off real quickly with uh, Leslie, you're to my, you're right to my, on my little chart here. That's where you are. So I'll let you start this. Tell me who you are. Tell me what you do and what your company's uh, scope of services are. Absolutely. Well, thank you for the opportunity. I'm Dr. Leslie Hodge. I am a pharmacist and I'm the owner and founder of Scripps and Beyond. We do medication review and consulting for patients and we are partnering with healthcare agencies who want to add that extra touch with their clients. Uh, we know with medications being consumed by most of our population, um, there becomes that issue of understanding the medications and understanding what works and what doesn't work and avoiding interactions. And so we provide those personalized services for those patients. And we also help them if they're having problems affording the medication, help them find um, more cost sensitive alternatives, but that are still beneficial for them and their families and their overall health. And so um, Again, thank you for that. It is called Scripps and Beyond, and I can provide information later on in the call. Awesome. Lisa Brock, tell me who you are and who your company is and what you guys do. I am Lisa Brock. I'm a nurse practitioner, and I work for a company called Doctors to Home, which is out of Carmel. We are a group of about six providers, both nurse practitioners and physician's assistants who provide primary care, primarily primary care in the homes. Um, so, you know, when people ask me what I do, I say I make house calls and that's why I'm coming to you from my car because <laughs> it's the middle of a work day for me. Um, so we um, have quite a few providers in the Indianapolis area. I cover um, Muncie, Anderson, and Kokomo. So we have um, pretty wide, wide range throughout the state of services. Excellent. Um, so Lisa Campbell, tell me about who you are and what you do. I'm Lisa what your company does. Yeah, I'm Lisa Campbell and I'm VP of Healthcare Partnerships with Paradigm Health. And what we do is we provide home health palliative and hospice care to patients in their home, uh, wherever and whatever home may look like. Um, our big um, push right now is um, our palliative program, as well as our hospice program, but um, Paradigm Health is, is honored um, to be the first in the nation to be awarded um, palliative care accreditation from HC, ACHC. So, we're the only palliative program right now that is accredited. So um, yeah, that, that's a, a big deal. And I, I, and I want to brag about it, but I want to do it humbly. <laughs> 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 so, um, but yes, yeah, so that's what we do. Well, excellent. Leanna Teeters, would you like to tell us who you are and what you, your company does, who your company <laughs> is? So I'll let you do all that. Yes. Um, my name is Lana Teeters. I am the Senior Director for Oak Street Health. Um, we are primary care for adults on Medicare. So we are all over Indianapolis. I'm on the north side, the like Glendale area. We have one in the Irvington area, one in the Speedway, and then one on the south side. And um, our primary care model is based on keeping people healthy and out of the hospital. So our patients go to the hospital 45% less than the average person on Medicare. Um, we also do in-house uh, paniatry, diabetic care, echoes, um, all that good stuff. So that's really neat. And we are what's called like a gold um, 
risk model, which is really, really cool because we partner with insurance companies that make sure that we keep their Medicare costs low, which is really important to our particular um, demographic. So, uh, and then we offer transportation, which is also something that a lot of people don't do. Um, and that's, yeah, so that's what we do. Well, excellent. Uh, Cindy, would you tell us about you and your organization? Hi, I'm Cindy Love, and I am with Trinity Free Clinic in Hamilton County. We are a clinic that serves the uninsured, underinsured, and low income of Hamilton County. We provide medical care, medical services, dental services, and vision care here, uh, free of charge. Our patients are... Um, we, we are a safety net a lot of times for patients who have kind of fallen through the cracks that are either um, new to our area, new to our country, and they don't have the, the access to Medicaid or Medicare, or um, they, are, uh, they have Medicare and don't have coverage for things like vision services. So uh, we kind of are that safety net clinic here. Thank you very much. That's great. I've been, I've been to your facility. It's a, it's a lovely facility. So I and I I had no idea that there was such a need in Carmel, Indiana. That was a, that was a surprise to me when I first started meeting you guys. So uh, Tina Marie, so would you like to tell us about who you are and what you do? All right. So I'm Tina Baxter. I'm a gerontological nurse practitioner, and I'm with Adult and Child Health. Um, at Adult and Child, we provide uh, behavioral health services to adults, um, older adults, uh, young people, children, but also we uh, have our primary care clinics. So uh, we have several um, throughout the south part of uh, Indianapolis and down in Johnson County, where we take care of a variety of people. Um, and right Right now, we do have COVID vaccine available for those that need it Excellent. and are eligible. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Zach, I've got you hooked up here. I see your face now, so that's great. So tell us about you and, and your company and what all the scope of services you guys provide. Good morning, or I guess it's not morning, it's afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zach Niehaus. I am the Market Operations Manager for Dispatch Health here in Indianapolis. Um, our organization actually provides a alternative to patients to for going to the emergency room by bringing high acuity care and the comfort and safety of a patient's home. And we do it at a much more affordable cost than going to the emergency room. We're actually 80 to 90% less than going to the emergency room. Um, our teams are staffed by uh, nurse practitioners who have a background in emergency medicine. And we bring a DHMT in the home and we can provide a, um, a variety of different, uh, uh, perform a variety of different procedures, do diagnostic testing and different types of treatments that actually prevent people from having to have their care escalated to the emergency room. So our goal is to keep people at home as much as possible. Um, and we're really trying to fix this problem in the healthcare um, space where people are over are utilizing the emergency room and providing convenient on-demand access is how we do that. That's awesome. I, uh, a friend of mine, I just saw on Facebook, uh, was, had a picture of your car out front of her house and she was, she was sick and she has a little like three-year-old. And so you guys came and took care of her at her house and she was like, oh my God, I had no idea. Yeah. So, this is, you know, so that was very cool. So that of course it probably didn't hurt your, uh, it got quite a bit of attention, you know, so anyway, anyway so that, uh, Molly, would you like to tell us about you and who you are and what you do? I'm delighted, Jim. Thanks so much for having us. Our company is called Profound Health Solutions, and we offer to our clients health education services in order for them to live with more vitality, to be able to age in place and do that with stability. Our major program is the diabetes, the nationally recognized diabetes prevention program. And we also have, we just have gained our Medicare approval, so we'll be offering that service as well, the Medicare Diabetes Prevention Program. Uh, we're a mobile company, so we're going into independent living communities, retirement communities, obviously on, a, an, on an availability basis right now, but um, just offering those in-person programs and then to be able to follow those clients and help them to stay healthy and well and be able to age in place. 
Well, that's going to say that's a great thing. I mean, and and we've got a really good team of people here. We have we're covering a lot of different bases, uh, but they're not your traditional go to the dock in a box type environment. So it's a different, you know, a different thing. And I'm really excited to uh, get more of that out of, of what all you guys do. I was going to say real quick, I was going to uh, uh, pick on Leslie real quickly. You know, I think when we first met, we were just having this conversation before we uh, before we start, went live here. We met like a few days before the whole world came crashing to an end with uh, with COVID. But one of the things that I remember having a conversation with you about was my own grandmother was, and I think this is a situation a lot of people are in. They had gotten so medicated and so they, you know, different doctors and she went to this doctor and they gave her something and went to this doctor and there wasn't really anybody that was monitoring the reactions and what have you. And she had gotten to where she was on a cane. She was really doing, you know, not doing as well. And she went to a new young doctor who said, the first thing we're going to do is get rid of all these drugs. Okay. So she went through a weaning process really was, she had some serious withdrawal issues for a while, but then she was back. Kane was gone. She felt great. And now this is my grandmother, which, you know, maybe tells you a little bit better about me. She went back into her original doctor's office and what just made an appointment just to see him walked in and saw a look on his face she goes you thought i was dead didn't you and then she flipped him the the uh, there's a uh, 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 international symbol with your hands <laughs> and then walked out so but so i know that's what you do you know to help clean this stuff up so would you like to tell us a little bit about that Absolutely. So, um, and I definitely, definitely remember that story <laughs> so often, which is really uh, one of the reasons why it was important for me to start this company. And, um, and our goals are to really review, recommend and reach. Those are our three pillars. So reviewing the medications that the patient is taking and using. A lot of times, as you said, they are not being monitored or, and or patients are taking, um, their health into their own hands, which is a good thing in some cases, but they're taking supplements, they're using creams, they're using um, topical agents, they're using all of these other medications which have not been shown to interact well with their prescribed medications. And so providing those personalized medication reviews has allowed people to understand one, that they're doing more harm than good to themselves, but also identifying medications that have been used or are being used inappropriately. And so sometimes we're just in the habit of getting prescriptions filled. We don't even ask questions anymore. And so with our services, we're able to do an overview of all the medications that they're taking and using, and then also recommending on their behalf if they like, or we can uh, help them recommend with their prescriber um, some alternatives that maybe have less side effects or cost less, or they don't have to take as frequently. Uh, medication adherence or compliance or you know, really following the doctor's orders is a big issue with our healthcare costs. And so if someone is having to take something three times a day and they're only taking it twice a day, they're not getting the full benefit. And so explaining that and having those conversations are key um, to just overall health and wellness. Well, that's great. I mean, we, I, you know, I talked about my, my grandmother, but my mother-in-law was on, she had three different doctors prescribing her a very heavy duty antidepressant. She was taking three times. I mean, it was, it was terrifying when we found this out. So yes, that's a real problem with a lot of people. I think, you know, not, having that monitored closely. I was going to say, Lisa Campbell and Molly, you guys both do a lot of stuff inside senior living communities. Is that correct? Is that kind of where, where a lot of your scope is? Or do you do stuff in homes as well? How does that work? I don't care who starts. Um, well, uh, we do, um, yes, to both questions. <laughs> Uh, we provide care within facilities, but um, we also provide a lot of care in the home. Okay. And um, honestly, kind of my role is to develop these partnerships with these uh, hospital health systems and physician offices, as well as we are developing um, relationships in facilities at two. So, you know, what we want to see uh, with our palliative program that I spoke about earlier is that program is is so needed and so important because it is the one program or the one type of care that a patient can stay on 
as long as there's a medical need. So there's really not an end to that program um, because it's really focused on those patients with comorbidities. Um, and if you are that patient, those things aren't going away. Um, so what the palliative program does is it, it enables us to keep patients out of the hospital because it's another set of eyes on them. A patient can be on home health with any home health care company and still have palliative care through us because palliative care is uh, billed through Part B. Um, so, you know, palliative care tends to look at, I want to say, the, the big picture of, of their health care as a big picture. So you have home health that's going to eventually discharge them because they get them back to baseline. Then you have palliative care that they can stay on for as long as there's a medical need, which with the comorbidities, there always will be. And once we see decline or changes in that care plan, we can have that conversation of what maybe that care plan needs to change to. And so that may be when that conversation of hospice comes up. Um, and the goal really of palliative care is when it is time for a patient to have a different care plan, we would love to see them get on hospice sooner so that their quality of life is better and their longevity is longer when you get on hospice earlier and you get that so much more care. So that's kind of what paradigm looks at is that whole gamut of care. And, and the importance of people getting the right care, and Molly knows this, I'm sure too, the right care, all of you do. I mean, we all, we, I can tell we could all work together here. <laughs> but, um, you know, these that, panels have a tendency to cause yeah. that. <laughs> um, but, you know, we want to see a patient get the right care at the right time in their lives. I mean, and that's what you all do. Um, we want to make sure everyone's getting the care they need. Excellent. I, I love what she said. I'll just add a couple things. Uh, we do not do in home. We have a distance learning program, but it is not Medicare sponsored. The Medicare sponsored programs are in person. And so we do in person, but they are group programs. And that group is really s significant because it's the support system that establishes for them. And the program lasts for a year. The Medicare follows for two years on a once a month basis after the first year. And so it's long-term behavior change, behavior modification, which is really significant, especially at that age, to be able to offer those tools and education that are beneficial for them. I'll leave it at that. I love what I'm hearing, so thank Excellent. you. Well, I was gonna say one thing too, is I, you know, I, I uh, Lisa, I became uh, familiar with your company when you guys affiliated with the community that my mom lives in. So that's how I, you know, that's why I first, I was went to one of your meetings and you were explaining what was going on. So that, you know, if somebody is watching today or they're watching this video later, if you need a Molly or, uh, or Lisa in your uh, community for your family member that's there, you know, raise Kane, tell them, up, tell them to have them come in. So, yeah, so there's a way of doing that as well. So, Zach, I want to pick on you a little bit. I was going to say that I love what you guys are doing. You're doing a new, a, a new approach. And I love what's, what's happening with that. And, and Tina had also brought this up in our conversation we had, I don't know, a week or so ago. Tina kind of alerted me to something that I've been kind of thinking about anyway. Life's Copilot is really built for seniors, their families, and their caregivers. But like she wrote up, there's an awful lot of people that are doing caregiving for people that are not seniors. You know, so we obviously that is probably a direction we'll probably be adding to it as well and Zach you guys don't just cover seniors you cover like I said you used to care one of you know a young mom and her three-year-old so it's you know so tell me what tell me more about it because you guys are kind of new to the marketplace here tell me what if I'm looking for something how would I know to find you know what to do or something help me help me with that process yeah I can certainly walk you through kind of how it works um so as I had mentioned, Dispatch Health, we can see and treat everything that an urgent care can do and then up to 70% of what the emergency room can do. And we do this in a truly on-demand fashion. So if I'm in need of care, let's say, um, for example, I'm a, uh, I'm a senior, maybe I recently had a fall in the fall, caused injury, maybe a skin tear or a laceration. Um, and I need care. Um, I can actually reach out directly to Dispatch Health in one of three ways. We have a telephone number, 
Um, it's our general care request line. You're going to get connected to a representative who will assist with onboarding. You can also submit a care request online, or we have a really nice mobile app that you can use as well to request care. Um, once you get connected with somebody, you are uh, they're going to actually put you through our onboarding process where we will um, do a proprietary screening process that will enable us to make the determination as to whether or not it's safe and appropriate for us to provide care in the home. So once we ask a, a few questions to the patient about their symptoms, um, it'll give us a risk score that will tell us one, we can go safely see that patient. Two, we, we need to have another person um, talk to this patient to review whether or not it's safe. Or three, we escalate care to the emergency room up front. We don't ever want to delay somebody's care when they call us and they're having a truly time sensitive or life threatening emergency. Um, but once that patient gets through the screening process, they get assigned to our team, we are going to jump into action. And what that looks like is our nurse practitioner and our dis, uh, dispatch health medical technicians will load up our cars with all seven of our kits. Um, that will enable us to do a variety of different procedures, treatments, diagnostic capabilities right in the home. And we arrive on scene typically within two hours of care being assigned to our team. Um, once we get in the home, we're going to do an assessment of that patient. In this situation, we'd look over that laceration. Our team can stitch, suture, staple, um, no problem. We get that patient sewed up. Um, and otherwise, that, that would have been somebody who would have likely been escalated to the emergency room. Um, uh, if, if it's a, a severe enough laceration. Um, but there's a variety of different things that we can do. So for example, we can, um, we can place IVs and get people started on IV antibiotics, or if they're having dehydration, get them started on IV fluids in the home. Um, once we get that patient treated, we actually coordinate all this care back to the patient's primary care provider. Our team does not provide primary care soups and services. We're here to treat the acute issue to prevent the, um, the emergency room visit and or the hospitalization. Um, and we'll, we'll send that note back to the patient's PCP within 24 to 48 hours, and then also make any appropriate referrals as necessary um, based on you know, what we were seeing the patient for. Um, so that gives you a little bit of an idea of how the dispatch health model works. Um, I'm happy to elaborate further on, you know, like cost and things like that, if that'd be something you're interested in. Well, Zach, I appreciate it. I was going to say that I, you know, I had an experience with going to ER uh, just recently, myself, well, a year ago, because it was when I had COVID. I was trying, I'm like, man, this is, I, I feel like crap. And they just kept telling me I had the flu. Uh, but anyway, um, I ended up doing it, and I'm not going to say where, but I went in and they just said, keep taking Tylenol, it's just the flu. Um, and if, and that was $1,700. So that, that was kind of annoying. <laughs> but, uh, I'm like, you know, you could have killed me, but I'll pay you anyway. But anyway, so, but, uh, um, so I get it. You're a bit, so you're, you're saying you're like 90% less than the ER is what you're saying. Yeah. 80, 90? So whenever we bill for a visit from dispatch health, we actually bill out at the urgent care level. So typically patients, um, for example, who have a commercial health insurance plan through maybe your Anthem or your United Healthcare, on, um, they're typically paying their out-of-pocket costs for an urgent care visit, which is usually some, uh, usually between $25 and $50 is what the copay is. Um, for seniors who have Medicare, um, on average, they're paying only about $27 out of pocket. If it's somebody who has a Medicare Advantage plan, on average, they're paying about $17 out of pocket. Um, so I know me personally, um, based on my high deductible insurance plan that I have, if I went to the emergency room, I would have a $500 copay just for walking through the door. Um, so I would much rather have um, somebody be able to come see me in my home where I can wait on the comfort of my couch to, to get care. That's awesome. Molly, um, oh, I'm sorry, Lisa, let's go that direction. Lisa uh, Brock, you're in the same space, but you're pretty much a regular primary care. Is that correct? I think you're, are you muted? You're muted. Right yeah, now. I got to unmute myself. Yeah, so we, we are uh, the different end of that. And I can see how dispatch health would really complement what I'm doing in the home. So I'm typically seeing people for primary care issues, taking care of their medications, like Leslie was talking about, making sure 
um, doing some of that monitoring so that they're not on a lot of medications, not having a lot of side effects from those medications, not having a lot of interactions, um, drawing blood to make sure kidneys and liver and things are okay, making sure that we get the tests that we need um, whether it's mammograms or those preventative things. I don't do those in the home, obviously, but I can refer those out. Um, we also partner with some other companies so that we can do like x-rays and um, the lab tests where people come to their home and take care of those things. Um, so they don't have to leave their home for some of those diagnostic testings, testing. But I don't um, have the ability to take care of people who are a bit more urgent. Um, so that's where dispatch health would be a good complement to that. Um, especially, you know, in general, I want to take care of people as best I can so that they stay out of the emergency room, but those kinds of things can't really be avoided sometimes. Um, and so that would be a nice piece to my practice for sure. Well, that's, I, I will tell you that I've, I've had experience with a in-home doctor, um, with my father, he was, um, basically unable to get out very easily and it was a real challenge and we had that service for some time it was truly a blessing to have you know through that process so um so how do how, and this is really for i'll get back to this in a second i'll go back to these questions but anyway but let me do so real quick on um uh leanna would you explain i i don't think a lot of people know about this service where you were you can somebody will come pick you up at your house and bring you to the uh to the clinic and and take care of you so i, I don't see you on my screen but i think you're still there so lee i'm sorry was that me someone came in my office I have <laughs> <All> right, <sorry. laughs> um what was your question? Okay, I'm sorry. Not... Basically, I don't think a lot of people know about what you guys provide. That there's this 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 company that will come out in their little vans and pick them up and take them to the doctor and 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 some of the stats that you guys have been telling me as far as you know the diabetic uh, amputations, the the re hospitalizations that 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 you guys have been able to do by a constant care process. So I, I just like to get that word out to people. Yeah, no, um, what we, what, so I actually, I used to be a paramedic for a firehouse, and one of the things that we found all the time was people were using the emergency room for their primary care, right, and that is not primary care, it's um, emergent care, and they can't follow you through, you know, your journey through what you really need, and when I came out with Oak Street, what's interesting is that um, we are seeing the same people. They were coming in, they're like, I don't need primary care because I go to the hospital or even my specialist. And we're like, well, that's actually not, you really need primary care because it's going to help keep you healthy instead of going to the ER. And Zach is right, like ER visits are insanely expensive. The moment a physician walks in the door, it's $1,200 added to your bill. Like it's just, it's pretty insane. Oxygen on an ambulance is $800. Um, so it's like, we, think, we don't think about how to, I don't think the education's there. And I think that's pretty prevalent actually all around Indianapolis. So Oak Street came up with a model and it's, it was founded by a, an ER doctor in Boston. And he's like, we need to find a way to love on these people before they have to come to the ER. And so our stats are, they're pretty amazing because it actually works. It is healthcare instead of sick care. And um, I'm super behind that and I love that. So yeah, our, I know like for diabetics, um, our people have 98% less amputations. That alone is beautiful. I mean, that that's a huge deal. So, and then our people are hospitalized at least 45% less, which is in, at our Glendale clinic, it's like 58% less. So it's really cool. Well, one thing that I was really taken by with, with your model was the frequency that you want to see those clients. You know, you know, it's, it's, it's a high, much higher frequency than what I'm accustomed to, you know, you know, definitely what I'm accustomed to. I kind of go when I'm dying. So, but anyway, so, you know, but. Well. Yeah, so the typical primary care model is, let's see you once a year, um, which might be fine for, you know, some of us who are younger and spry, but when you're looking at Medicare patients, um, you know, when you think about, anything that's a little bit older, has a little bit more mileage on it, you're gonna need, they're gonna need more care more often. 
So if you're thinking about like COPD, CHF, diabetes, that really beautiful trifecta we see so often, um, they're going to need to be in the doctor at least once every couple months just to get that checked. Um, and that is how we keep them from going to the ER and keeping them safe. I also understand that you guys have a very low doctor to patient ratio or whatever. So that, so people get more time rather than the three minutes that, that you get a lot of time. So, you know, but so, well, that's very cool. And like I said, I, I, I love all your guys' models. That's why you're on here. <laughs> okay. So that's, you know, that's, that's the whole point. Um, one of the things I was going to go back to Tina, Tina, you're, if I understand correctly, most of yours is dealing with the mind and, and emotions as, as much as the, the body. Is that correct? Or correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, yes. Uh, we we try to be full service. I mean, you can't separate your your mind from your body, right? So if you have schizophrenia when you're 25, guess what? You will have schizophrenia when you're 65. And so I think what a lot of people don't understand is that this is a lot of mental illness, uh, chronic, I'm talking about the chronically mental ill, uh, they still have those symptoms even when they get older. And so we want to make sure that we're managing the, their symptoms so they can get, you know, live the best lives. I have clients that are in their 60s and 70s that are still working, but they're well managed on their medications. And so that's the critical uh, piece is making sure that we're prescribing things appropriately in the appropriate doses to manage their illness, even though they may be older. And so I know that um, sometimes, uh, particularly in the long-term care, because I came from a long-term care background, um, a lot of times in long-term care, we always want to do those gradual dose reductions, but they may not be appropriate for someone who has bipolar disorder or schizophrenia, because you may actually be doing more harm, and every episode of psychosis further decreases their brain capacity to get better and get well. So that that's the, the big piece, um, is that I want to make sure that everyone, we look at all their medications that they're on, and so I'm a big proponent of that. Um, and I agree with everything you're, everyone said on here. Um, and I actually had a client come in that was in an assisted living who had like four different specialists, a primary care doctor. None of them were talking to each other. And they were like, well, you know, what medications are you giving me? And why am I having this? And do I need to be on? I said, well, let's stop and look. I, I went through her med list. Out of, out of her 25 meds, I was responsible for two. <laughs> because I was addressing those issues, but I was able to come up with a chart for her to take back to her primary care to say, okay, this specialist is giving me this and this specialist is giving me that. She had a lot of comorbidities. We were able to get her meds reduced. So that was a win for her and us. Well, I, you, you, I've seen too many people get completely lost in that fog, you know, so, you know. Yeah. So. Well, um, Cindy, I absolutely adore what you guys are doing. So I want you to tell us about, you know, the uh, Trinity Free Clinic. It's, it's I, I, I would not know about it today if it wasn't for that, because somehow or another, I got invited to one of your luncheons. And we Lunch and learns, yeah. Learns, you know, so, you know, so please <laughs> yes. tell us about that, because I guarantee people on, probably maybe our panelists don't all know, know this, and then and there's, uh, I know there's people watching this that don't know about you. Well, Trinity Free Clinic has been around for 20 years. I'm actually one of the founders, so um, been here for a very long time. My, I'm actually, my specialty is on the opposite end of the spectrum. I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner, but um, have functioned in an operations role here for a long time. Um, we are designed to be a connector a lot of times for our patients. We are um, designed, we do not provide primary care. We do um, a lot of what many of you are talking about, keeping patients out of the emergency room. So our goal is to do that, to catch an illness before it is, it is an illness that is causing a lot of problems, to get people well and back to work, those that are working, and then to provide hours that are convenient for the working under-resourced um, population. And our elderly a lot of times fall into the trap of, I don't have a car, I don't have transportation, I have to wait until um, my son or daughter comes home from work in order for me to receive health care. And where that ends up then is they are in, the, in a hospital emergency room getting treatment for that strep throat. So we do provide hours here that address the working poor, which is we have Saturday hours, 
We have, uh, which includes dental care, vision, everything on Saturdays. We also have um, evening hours. So we'll have a clinic tonight from six to eight for hypertension. We have afternoon hours. We have an, uh, an afternoon women's clinic from one to four today. So we have morning clinic hours. So we are, should be able to hit all of those hours that if someone is working evenings, if they're in the restaurant business, they can come in in the mornings. If, if someone is working days and they get off at five, they can come to a clinic from six to eight. So we try to address those hours that um, for increased access. So our patients can um, come in during hours that are convenient for when their transportation is. Like I said, we also kind of catch those people who have no insurance coverage or have limited insurance coverage, especially for dental care and for um, vision care. We um, have kind of expanded since COVID has started. We have now started telemedicine here. We have just gotten a brand new mobile unit with, it's beautiful, two full exam rooms where, where we're going to meet our patients where they are. So um, taking them, we are going to park in Sheridan in the LF Pharmacy parking lot and provide care. We are going to uh, be at food pantries. We are going to be in housing additions. So we are going to be parking where our patients are to again, remove that barrier. We are currently also a county um, COVID testing site, which was a big expansion for us. So we are seeing again, COVID testing at hours that are convenient in the evenings on Saturdays when patients can come in and have the transportation to get there. And also again, providing interpretation on site um, without a language line for those patients. We have just been approved by the state to be a COVID vaccine, vaccine site. So we're waiting on our shipment. We are very, very excited about it. And again, we are going to be able to provide informed vaccination for COVID. We know that that marginalized population has a lot of questions. Um, things are not in their language. Uh, son and daughter might be bringing um, their elderly parent in. So we have to have those hours that are convenient and also be able to provide the information in the language that that older person is speaking for that true informed vaccination. We also provide physical therapy here. Um, not necessarily for total hips and knees, but for a lot of overuse injuries, a lot of work-related low back pain, those types of things. Um, so we have that, that access for our seniors here also. And again, it's a lot of our seniors are, are um, patients who are just simply ineligible for other help in, the, in society, ineligible for Medicare or Medicaid. So let me ask you a question. Who qualifies to come there? So um, you must live in Hamilton County. So we do ask for proof of uh, residency in Hamilton County. We do also ask for proof of income. We serve at 250% of the poverty level. So uh, we have those two, those two guidelines to access care here. Um, and just as another quick that I forgot to, to mention, we are actually in the process, process of expanding to provide integrated mental health for depression and anxiety here. Just depression and anxiety, that's it. But um, we have gotten a, a grant and we all know with COVID, right? There's a lot, of, a lot more of depression and anxiety around. So we, are, um, we have just hired a family nurse practitioner that is here 32 hours a week. So we provide care uh, six days a week here and we are in the process of hiring a counselor that will provide counseling at the time of that acute care visit, which is um, much more accessible than bringing. We know once we get our patients here, we really wanna see them when they're here. Same with our pharmacy. We do have a pharmacy on site. So our patients leave with their medication. An extra stop um, for our patients, a lot of time to pick up that medication results in them not getting the medication. So we provide um, for most of, our, most of our medication, we provide it here on site for free. And then we have an agreement with a community pharmacy that if we happen not to carry the medication they need, they can pick it up there and we are billed for it. So um, the patient does leave with their medication at no cost also. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with you and then I'm gonna go through everyone on, a lot of this, on this particular question. We've just covered who you serve, okay. Um, how, when someone walks in your door the first time or they call you and they come in, what's the process gonna look like for them? Are you talking to me? Yeah. Um, the process is that, first of all, our, our front office staff is totally bilingual. So um, 
if we have an issue with the language barrier, they're able to take that patient call and walk them through the registration and actually do it for them on the phone. We have just gone to an EMR, um, a rollout during COVID, which um, a rollout during COVID with 300 volunteers because we are staffed by volunteers here. The majority of our care is provided by volunteer doctors, nurses, pharmacists, dentists. So um, we have a very small staff of nine and the rest of it is volunteer provided. So, but with that new EMR, we are working on patient access via smartphone. We do know that many of our patients have that smartphone um, ability, but right now the, the registration is done over the phone with our front office staff to get them into the system and then um, they will start their reminder calls. They can um, email or bring in their uh, proof of uh, residency and income verification at the time of their visit or prior to the visit um, in order for them to access that care. All right. Well, no. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. So uh, Lisa, Brock, so tell me the process with you guys. Who do you, who's the main, who do you serve? Who's your, your client base that you're looking for? Um, and what do they need to know when they, when they first call you? What's, this, what's the process going to be like for them? What are they going to expect? So we serve primarily people who have difficulty getting to their physician. So um, they are primarily elderly people, but not always. Sometimes they are bedbound um, younger adults, um, homebound younger people. Um, they don't necessarily have to be homebound, um, but they do have to have a reasonable difficulty getting to and from a physician's office. Um, we really just have our front desk phone number and patients can call. And when they call, they give uh, what insurance they have, where they live. Um, and we send somebody out to get established. And what territories do you guys cover again? Uh, we have a couple of nurse practitioners in Southern Indiana, Bloomington, uh, around in there. We have, a, we have several in the downtown um, North, I'm sorry, I'm from Muncie, so I don't always know the Indy, um, but I know Carmel, Westfield, um, pretty much all of Indy. And then, like I said, I take care of um, Delaware County, Madison County, Marion and Kokomo. So those areas primarily. Well, thank you. So, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, so Tina, tell me about, you know, who do you serve? How do they find you? What's the process going to feel like? Okay, so we again uh, at Adult and Child, we serve all ages. Um, and so we do also have, uh, I'm the geriatric person. <laughs> uh, so I work with a lot of the geriatric clients at Adult and Child. So the easiest way to get in touch with us is to call our um, uh, crisis line or our intake line at 317 882 5122. That's 317-882-5122. They'll go through an intake process with an intake clinician. And right now, because of COVID, we're doing a lot of that uh, via phone or on Microsoft Teams, you know, some type of telehealth. So uh, then they can set them up either with a, a therapist uh, to be seen and a psychiatry appointment for their medications. And then if they are looking for a primary care provider, we also have awesome primary care clinics, which by the way, our primary care clinics are open to uh, seeing patients in person now. Um, so that's great. We've been able to reopen as of the beginning of this month fully for the primary care side. Excellent. Leanna, would you tell me about who your, who's your clientele? How do they find you? What's the process like? Sure. Uh, we serve anyone with Medicare and they have to have Part B. So everyone's going to get that Medicare Part A naturally, but then the Part B they have to sign up for. So they have to have Part B to the doctor's office. Um, and we, there are a couple ways. So they can actually just visit oakstreethealth.com if they want to. Um, but also we have what's called outreach teams. And I have a team that I get to run that gets out in the community. They do a lot of community events and they will find seniors. That's literally their job. And they will educate them on primary care. And um, so that you might see them around. Um, but yeah, they can call, they can get on the website, or they can track down someone in really bright green. That's usually Oak Street Health. 
Excellent. Zach, would you tell us how, how do, who do you serve? You got you, you, you're a broader base of people. What areas and what's it like to call you? Who might, what's it going to feel like to me as the consumer? Yeah, so we serve what I would describe as being the greater Indianapolis area. So we have everything inside of the 465 loop. Um, our office is actually located off of 82nd Street in Allisonville. We don't see patients at this office. We only see patients in their homes or in their community. Um, but we have all of the cities that touch Indianapolis as well. So Zionsville, Carmel, Fishers. Um, we go up as far northeast as Anderson and as far east as Greenfield. On the south side, we have like Southport, Greenwood, um, southwest side, we have Plainfield, and then around the west side, Avon and Brownsburg. Um, so we really kind of cover what I would describe as being greater Indianapolis. Um, our demographic, we see patients age three months and up. Um, obviously, there's a need, especially right now, as we're amid a, um, a pandemic, there's a need in that senior population to avoid going out and um, exposing yourself unintentionally if you don't have to. Um, so uh, we also are open 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, every single day of the year. So that's 365 all every weekend, every holiday. Our, our, we are open for business, and we're, we're able to create access to care during those times when oftentimes it can be difficult to get access to care. If you need to, to activate dispatch health, um, I would uh, recommend using our general care request line. It is 317-284-6847. Uh, we actually um, work really closely with certain healthcare partners and we can actually get them set up for their healthcare provider providers to call a specific number that gives them an expedited onboarding experience. So it kind of depends on who the end user is as to what their experience is gonna be like when they use dispatch. Um, but for your typical patient who's re just requesting care on their own, um, they're gonna get connected to somebody from our care team. They're gonna ask him, um, some specific questions about what's going on with them, put them through that screening protocol that will help us make that determination as to whether it's safe and appropriate for us to provide care in the home. Um, and, you know, you can expect within a reasonable amount of time, it's typically within two hours, our team's going to be on scene taking good care of you at that time. That's excellent. So let's see, I'm trying to think who I've got next to ask here. Um, let's see, um, Lisa. So Lisa Campbell, tell me about the same thing. Who do you guys serve? How do they find you? And uh, what's, it, what's it feel like when I walk in your door? Um, or whatever your door happens to be. We, we will probably not have many patients walking in our door as we, are, we provide medical services. So um, our patients are seen after we receive an actual medical order from a physician, um, which would come out of a facility, a physician's office, or um, a hospital. So once we have a medical order, then our process begins with intake and, and medical uh, documentation to make sure people are qualified to receive the care that they need. Um, so we're not going to have much of that kind of walk-in type situation, um, but we do have 24-7 service answered um, by our staff, and we are a family-owned company, so we are not a big corporation, which is nice for us because it allows us to change processes or, or make changes that best suit um, referral sources or patients. Um, so our phones are answered by live people. <laughs> And um, so they have access to us 24 seven. And I, I will say another thing, uh, I guess, Zachary, we presented to you guys this morning. I don't know if you know that <laughs> or not. <laughs> a coincidence, I'm not sure. Not. But anyway, um, but one thing I would like to say to, um, you know, just before this is over, I, I think that is important. And I, I, I bet all of you probably will agree with me that it's important that the community and our um, patients know that they have absolute choice in their health care. Um, there are situations where, you know, hospitals, facilities, physicians will make suggestions to their patients, which I totally understand, um, that maybe to get 
a certain help from a certain company or whatever. Um, you know, we are trying to kind of make a big push that really everyone has a choice in their health care and they should do what's right for them. And, um, and families really kind of need to be that advocate for uh, their parents, um, for, um, you know, anyone that's going to need the, these services. Um, we provide services in Marion County and the Donut Counties, um, but we also are in Muncie and we're in Kokomo. And um, it looks like in the you know, next two years, we're probably expanding to a um, couple other counties as well. So it's, a, it's an exciting time for us too. That's excellent. Now, do you need, do people, if, if people are hearing this and they go, man, this is a pretty cool company, but their doctor doesn't know about you or whatever, is it something they should bring up to their doctor? Sure. And um, if the doctor wants more information, he can call our office. And we have so many wonderful and caring liaisons out there that we can always have uh, one of them return a call and, and educate on our services, um, especially palliative. Honestly, a lot of physicians don't understand what palliative is. They think it's hospice and it's not. Um, so, you know, anytime we have an opportunity to educate anyone, uh, we would always like that opportunity for sure. And, and I'm hoping like at the end of this, I don't know the protocols here, but I would love to have everybody's contact name and, and, you know, names of companies for, you know, to reach out for sure. I, one thing, one thing I will do is uh, we have a video record, recording this. I'll send each of you in a big group email that. So you'll have everybody's email from that perspective as well. Um, Cause this is always happens at these panels. We have, and you know, it's like, oh my gosh, we can work together and do things. So, which is part of the whole idea. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, but that's great. I am, I'm, I'm really excited about it. And I also want to ask you, well, I'm, I'm going to have to get back with you. I'm having a hospice, um, panel coming up and I'd love to have you on that and talk about this as well because that talk about you say that no people don't know what palliative care is people don't know what hospice is either they think it's a morphine drip for the last five minutes it's not yeah you're but, right uh, yeah so it's that's why we do panels on it to try to educate people I missed out for my father I would have loved to have known about it before you know so you know me as well Jim so and I will say one more thing I'm sorry I'm half Puerto Rican so we talk a lot um <laughs> But what I love about what I'm learning today, too, is, is I, as I feel that as I get older, that um, I'm going to be able to have everything I need at home. And, you know, I, so I'm not going to leave my house, <laughs> kind of like COVID. But, um, but you know, it, it's, it's wonderful to know that the, all of you provide these services you know, and, and that people have an opportunity to have it in their home, in the comfort of their home, because that that's huge. That is huge. It is. Molly, tell me about dealing with you. Someone is how they going to, you know, how they going to find you. When, who's your who's your clientele and uh, what's it like when someone actually connects with you? Thanks, Jim. I we are on the National Registry for the Diabetes Prevention Program. It, we're under Profound Health Solutions, LLC. This is one way that we can be found. We've been doing a lot of word of mouth, believe it or not, and then our community advertising in the communities that we have been involved with thus far. Those are many of the ways. Then we also have a website, www.profoundhealthsolutions.com, which has our programs and usually start dates or what's going on there. We have a Google voice number that we utilize and most of those callbacks happen within a couple of hours. And the number there is 765-335-5676. I can repeat that one more time, 765-335-5676. Our ideal client typically is someone who just got a pre-diabetes -diag pre diagnosis or a type two diabetes diagnosis, and they just need diabetes education. Ideally, we serve them with our program because it is the behavior modification. We also work together to refer them back to their healthcare providers for the questions and answers that they need. In the communities, then we refer them back to the services that are provided within their communities. Our distance learning program, we kind of have a gamut of ages. It's typically not the geriatric population or even over 62. 
just anyone who is pre-diabetic or type two diabetic looking at that diagnosis and wanting and needing education for that. We're mobile, so we come into the communities or we're distance learning where you are not. We don't really have a site. We have an office that we share with a medical practitioner, a physician, but we, I, I haven't been there in 18 months. Probably a lot of you have not been to places for a while. And I, did I answer everything? Okay, what happens originally when we get contacted? Usually we do a screening phone call or we just do an overview of what our program entails. Most in our program are self-selected. And so they're ready for the education. They're ready for what they need to do to be able to manage their situation, their health crisis or whatever they're going through at that time. Thank you Thanks. so much. Leslie, same, same basic questions. How do people find you? Who do you serve? And what's it like when they call Dr. Dr. Leslie? Thank you. Um, to answer the question, yes. So who do we serve? We serve all ages and all relationships. Um, many of you all spoke about um, the caregiver often being the child, now sometimes nieces, extended family. And so it's not always the patient who contacts us. Sometimes it is a concerned family member, um, a concerned child, a concerned family friend, right? And so they may have questions about their care, about their medications. They may feel like their uh, loved one is being used as a guinea pig in some sense with, you know, medication after medication. And so we help all ages um, serve the greater Indianapolis area. All of our services are provided, can be provided virtually. Um, and this was even before COVID. If they wanted to meet, then we could meet. That is not a problem. Um, the location can be decided upon, whether it's in the office or in their home. But we are still able to offer services virtually. And um, I think I got, what was one more question you asked? I do apologize. What does it feel like when they start? What's it feel like? Yes, what's it feel like? And so our, our motto is a pharmacist focused on you. And with healthcare, everyone's you know, constantly going and constantly feeling like a number. So we really do strive to make sure people feel like they are being heard and being listened to. And so it's hopefully a very warm, welcoming feeling. Um, oftentimes questions are asked the intake process, obviously, but one important question that is asked is what, is what are your concerns and what are your goals? Because a lot of times we never ask those questions. We just give, give, give information and we don't position the patient to give us information and give them an opportunity to speak about what their concerns are. And so with those questions, we learn um, what truly may be the problem. And oftentimes it can be too many medications, not having the, um, funds or financial ability to afford them and or just really wanting a better life. And so that's where the part about creating a plan comes in, creating a plan that reaches that patient's goal or that family member's goal for their loved one. So maybe it is they will be on medications, but maybe we're moved to um, twice a day versus three times a day or maybe they're having um, better lab results. And so it can be broken down in different um, components. It does not all at once. This is a process, but letting them know we're a part of that journey with them. And so again, just so they can kind of get back to the old days of pharmacy where you felt like the pharmacist was someone you could talk to, you could um, confide in. There are things that are shared with pharmacists that they don't always share with their primary physician and caregiver. And that can be very um, crucial to their overall care. And so really having those conversations and being um, an advocate for them, positioning those, those clients, again, whether it's the patient or their loved one to be an advocate and, in, and arming them with information, questions, things they need to be looking for, things they need to avoid, um, having that more detailed in-depth conversation that they don't always get um, in the doctor's office and or at the pharmacy when they are um, on, their way, on their way home because there's just um, information overload sometimes at those moments. And so really having that opportunity to provide that. That's excellent. Well, I'm gonna do a quick screen share. I wanna show you all something. Um, basically, for anyone watching this, if you like this panel, which I can't imagine that you didn't, it's, it was phenomenal. So, but uh, there's always these things coming up. You can come into the resources area here 
this this panel will be under video library soon okay that's where we put the the, the whole, all these panels go there but the events coming up we have uh today we just did this one uh on the 23rd of march we're doing one everything you wanted to know about medicare you know so all the different things there um now i know uh lisa which one <laughs> the the uh uh hospice is april 8th if you'd like to be on that we'll we'll get you added to that um and then um the 27th we're doing because april is uh parkinson's awareness month we're doing one on parkinson's and stuff on the 27th so so that's in that's always a resource you can find stuff there and uh Guys, thank you so much for your time. I absolutely enjoyed this. Uh, I am a information junkie anyway, and so I love these panels uh, because I guarantee you that people don't know about all the things that are provided that are available to them, and which is why we built Life's Copilot. Because, quite frankly, when I got into the senior world doing uh, with caring transitions, uh, doing the downsizing and estate sales and all that kind of stuff about two years ago. I had been a consumer in this market for 15 years with in-laws, parents, uncle, what have you. And I started meeting all you wonderful professionals and got angry. Like, where have you been? Why didn't someone tell me that these resources were there? So we built a place for people to find you. It's really what it comes down to. So, and get questions answered. So guys, thank you very much. Anybody have anything else to say? I mean, I can't believe an hour has gone by already, but, but we have, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye-bye, y'all. Bye-bye.